Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. And welcome to another episode of the Daily Red for Anfield Index. Another day of a different accent, though. So Mr Hendrick is away today, so it's me stepping in for you, ladies and gents. Dave Davis coming to you from a cold Edinburgh. I'm not going to lie, the cold hell and truly hit here up north. My hands are freezing, my feet, well, I've got nice slippers on actually, the missus bought for last Christmas, so they're getting all right, but that doesn't really matter, does it? It's all about Liverpool, it's all about Liverpool related stories, it's all about Liverpool and their next game, isn't it? I mean, let's be honest, ladies and gents, every bit of focus is on the derby. Half 12, Saturday, across Stanley Park at Goodison, Liverpool play Everton, Feel it just feels massive right now, doesn't it? It feels massive because of a, a little bit of what happened on Wednesday night. And we're trying to, well, you should have got over that by now, really. We can immerse ourselves in this, can't we? You might not have got over it. It's up to you, I suppose, realistically. But the focus is on this one. Bragging rights. We know what this means. We know this is the fixture we look out for more than anything. And even, and I'm not going to put it on the screen, but Virgil van Dijk has been talking about this. So that's on the official site, well worth a read. And it'll come out in a few other places, I suspect, as well. Last year, last year for me was the worst of the season. Let's not mince our words. We got out for, out battled, and then they just showed more heart and everything than us. Year. Genuinely, I was fuming for weeks after that game because you can lose a derby at Goodison. That that can happen. You can drop points, but you can't get out for and out battled in the derby. And that, to be fair, in a good way, is what I really like. Virgil van Dijk's been talking about that today. So if you see those comments, keep an eye out for them. They'll be the ones dominating. So that's the first thing to say. A couple of other things just to let you know. At quarter past one, so in about an hour's time, I don't know when you'll get this naturally. Arna Slot will be doing his press conference for the game. So there'll be a normal post-conference presser for myself, reviewing all that, intrigued to hear what he says, intrigued if there's any injury updates, you know, Alison Jota, etc. for this game. So we'll be reviewing all that and I won't give you my predicted lineup. Although I don't think for this one, it's that complicated personally. But that is just my own impression on that. So let's see, because it is Daily Red, what is going on out and about the houses, shall we, for everything Liverpool? Only one place to start. If you look at the uh, AI site here today, ladies and gents, quite a bit. Some interesting ones, some good review pieces. It's a fair result, a former Liverpool midfielder. I'll let you read that to find out who that is. Some key tactical analysis from Jackson there as well. That is well worth a read at the same time. This one, quite interesting. Darwin Nunes, a former Liverpool star, saying, I've lost all hope. So again, another spoiler alert, I'm not going to tell you who that is, but I don't know, the general overwhelming consensus, is that the, the right phrase? Doesn't seem to be positive around Nunes at the moment. Just have a good read of, naturally, a few previews around tomorrow's derby, because why wouldn't there be? Of course there's going to be at this point. Anything else to call out for you? Well, this one's interesting. Mo Salah. Mo Salah and his contract. Mo Salah and apologies. I'm going to pronounce this name worse than Bart's probably in this one, but I think it's pronounced Haitam Farouk, a journalist for Being Sports, did a tweet. Now, this is important to say. It wasn't yesterday. It was actually the day of the Newcastle game at and it's even late on in that Newcastle game as well, which I think people didn't quite clock at first. I know I didn't quite clock at first. So I'm going to, you can probably see a few things on the screen. Why am I mentioning this guy? Number one, he is followed by Mo Salah. That's it. I think that does add some validity to what he says, but I will come back to that. The second thing is you can see here, what did he tweet? And he tweeted, congratulations on renewing your contract with the number you like and the period you want. The Egyptian king rules with his own judgment. Now, naturally, 
that drew a lot of eyes, didn't it? And those eye emojis and all those types of things from myself as well, from everyone at Anfield Index. It has to be honest on that because we like the words Mo Salah. We like the words renewing. We like the words contract. We like the words the number you like and the period you want. All those things we like to hear and see, don't we? However, there's a couple of things to, to come back on with this. Quite a few people, and an Egyptian follows his report and say Liverpool said, this guy is it's not an expert. This is no insight particularly. This is not trying to be derogatory about Hayat and Farouk at all. It just seems that we probably know, to be honest, if it had been renewed. We like everything we read there, I know, but there's nothing, and I'm hoping this comes wrong, so far that indicates that there's any truth in that. I would love there to be. We would all love there to be. So we still await news on that one, ladies and gents. Other things I did want to bring you of AI content. This is, I'm genuinely buzzing for this. So we are now going to do a podcast that launches today called The Academy. So it's covering the younger age groups. It's Lewis Boa, who if you follow The Academy, if you follow Lewis, you'll know all about the insight, the expert analysis that he gives. So I'm generally buzzing that we've actually got him on Anfield Index and he'll be joined by young Ben. So they'll be doing video and audio versions that it says, really looking forward to this one because we do keep trying to keep track of The Academy. It's great to hear names like, I don't have to say in this, you're hoping the future names will become the names, you know, anytime soon, but the Trent, and I'm probably pronouncing these wrong, Kane Doherty, I think it's pronounced. People know about Ben Doak recently. That, that's nothing new. And I know people are going to say, well, we got it from Celtic anyway. Rio and Goma, if I'm pronouncing that one right as well, the young lad we pinched from Chelsea. We're hearing great things about him, aren't we? Various other youngsters in the relevant age group. And I think it's important. This is always something we've wanted on Anfield Index. And I'm genuinely, I'm excited. We've managed to actually tempt this and get him on it regularly and I think it's right as it says there he is a youth expert he does follow the academy teams inside and out so keep your eyes out if you want to watch it on YouTube etc keep your ears peeled if you do an audio version we have got in both ladies and gents so genuinely buzzing for this as buzzing if not a little bit more has anyone seen this today? So it's out today. The rest is football podcast. So normally it's a podcast with Alan Shearer, Gary Lineker, Mika Richards. But it's just Lineker today. And you're thinking, why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because you've got to listen to it. Alexis McAllister, the midfielder, the World Cup winning midfielder, one of our boys, one of our stars, does an in-depth pod, interview, whatever you want to call it. I don't really care with Gary Lineker. This is absolutely brilliant. I'll be honest, I've already watched and listened to it. I, there's so, so much. It talks about Klopp, Slot, his history in Argentina. Now, honestly, for me, I don't say this too often, it's a must watch, a must listen. So because I'm hyping it up so much, thinking, okay, let's play. And I've pulled out a specific segment for you here, ladies and gents. This is about a recent game. And as you can see there, I mentioned VVD, Salah and Trent. So I'm not going to play that bit where he talks about the contracts, but something very recently. So just have a listen to this. important for them to have a leader behind them. And in Virgil van Dijk, how, how much of a leader is he? Is he vocal on the pitch? Is he... Yeah, he speaks a lot. I, yeah. He speaks a lot. <laughs> uh, but that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, because you need, you need players like that. Um, and he he leads by by the example. Uh, he's uh, one of the leaders uh, with more with Robo Allison. We have uh, experienced players uh, that really help us uh, to be better players. And then they are so important because, for example, the game against Southampton. It wasn't it wasn't a good game from us. Uh, we were struggling a little bit, losing two one. And that's the moment where, when you need players to step up. And that was the meeting at halftime where the manager said, now I want to see the players uh, to step up. And that was uh, Virgil and, mm -hmm. and Salah uh, playing an amazing second half. And that's why you, you, need, you need them. And they are uh, good people. Uh, they help you if you need. 
and then on the pitch they do mm. they do the work. I, I, you knew I was going to ask you about Mo Salah. I mean, incredible player. Um, he's done it for so long. He's so consistent. Even on the days where it's perhaps not working for him, he'll end up with a, a goal from somewhere or even an assist. What's he like? I mean, you sit right next to him. You said in the mm-hmm. in the dressing room, we all know what he's like as a player. Um, so I'm going to stop that there, probably because any anyway, advert was coming didn't quite get me click right. But see just that little segment, ladies and gents. There, just McAllister talking about that game, admitting we were pretty terrible in that first half against Southampton. And what slot said specifically, now we need to step up. And who did it? The two elite players, exactly as he says, Mo Salah and VVD. And and he goes on further in that to actually talk about it a little bit more, which is absolutely brilliant. Honestly, as I said at the start, I don't say this too often with many pods because you'll all have your own preferences. And I completely understand that. That is a must watch. That is one of our key players talking for around an hour, going in depth on his, say, his career, everything. Definitely, definitely. Alexis McAllister, the rest is football, a mandatory watch for you. So what else is on the AI channel? I mean, I, I'm i actually enjoying this because I've watched a few of them. I've listened to a few of them. You genuinely are spoiled a little bit in a great way at the moment. Just the sheer content that's coming your way. So if you look from last night, you've got Grizz and Gags, the G&G show as they're calling it. So Housewives favourites there, chatting in depth about the Newcastle game and everything else. Absolutely brilliant. Even this today, genuinely delighted he's back. He's been away for a while, Rosie. Gives him real, as it says, talking tactics in depth there on the Newcastle game, what went wrong. And there was quite a bit that went wrong. And if you kind of put aside your ah, Kelleher moment and everything like that, it is a really good, I actually found it quite, I don't know, cathartic in a way, a little bit there. This one, always got a soft spot for these two gents. Alan Andrew, Minefield, love this pod. Literally a breakdown of sort of the winning formula, as they've called it, the mentality around Liverpool as well. And even this, look at this, just in the last 24 hours, You've got Mulby on the spot. You know Jan Mulby. You know he's going to give expert analysis and insight there. And scouted. So Carl and Dave did a full preview of Newcastle and into the Everton game. So all those came out, ladies and gents, in the last 24 hours. Also, the media matters yesterday that I did with David Lynch as normal. So plenty for you to listen to, get your tea stuck into. And naturally, the question follows. What is upcoming? Watch alongs galore. So there he is, Jack. He'll be doing all his bits there for the various games. So tomorrow morning, he will be there naturally for the Everton game. God, they come thick and fast, don't they? Girona coming in the near future at the same time as well. So there's a million things for. A couple of things I did want to call out, and I know they're coming later today as well forward chatter. Now, Dave's talked about this yesterday on the Daily Red. We've talked about it on the transfer show as well, me and Trev. It almost seems to have been missed a few things. So what we said on the transfer show was, again, you know, we do dig in, we try and get info. We're not pretending to be ITKs. We just tell you what we find out. And sometimes we don't find anything out on certain topics. But for the forwards, the bit we really got, and Everyone knows their thoughts on Nunes. I think that's well and truly crystallised now. But this is one to call out. We got bits on Jota and Diaz. Both 28 in the summer. Both will have two years left on their contract. Both looking for wage increases and extension as well at the same time. Now, at that age, and especially I think with question marks over Jota and his availability, he's still been out since Chelsea, well, you know, will Arnold Stark give us any more on that today? Who knows? But you can't really see Liverpool wanting to renew both of those, can you? Then you'll probably have your suspicions on what happened to Nunes at the same time. So we will wait and see what happens there. But I know coming up today, there's a few other attackers mentioned. So just keep your eyes out around potential Liverpool targets. And the other big call out, realistically, is Kirkes. You'll see this. 
been clocked by many of you on various websites. A target is reported by many for Liverpool. Dominic Zabozlai may be letting the cat out of the bag as well on this one at the same time. So we will see what comes out. But I think it doesn't mean he's definitely coming. It doesn't mean he'll definitely be a Liverpool player in the summer or January. No one really knows that. But by all intents and purposes, there's a real belief that Milos Kerkes, the Bournemouth left back, is of real, real interest to Liverpool. We'll see what develops there. But we might as well, ladies and gents, come back to where we started. 12.30 tomorrow. What an absolutely massive game. Think Things we already kind of know, just to keep in your mind, it's important. We saw Alexis McAllister there doing his interview. Don't forget, we're not going to see him for a while because he is suspended for the Everton game, so he won't be playing in the derby on Saturday. He is also suspended for the Girona game, so he'll have... It's not a good thing that he's missing games, but at least try and look at the positive. He has a bit of rest before Fulham, doesn't he? And probably that's why. Maybe he's doing the interviews and all those. Who knows? Because he's got that free time, that free opportunity. So that's one thing to consider. We're hoping we get injury updates. Alison and Jota would be nice to hear mentioned, wouldn't it? Not heard about them for, for a while. I hope one of the journos presses on a slot on that, fingers crossed. And when we get a more definitive answer, let's hope it is positive news on that. As we talked about Darwin Nunes, the lineup, all those two types of things. But the ultimate one I really want to finish this podcast on is we are seven points clear at the moment. I know there might still be a few feeling a bit down about Newcastle and what happened at the end. I get that. They may see it as two points dropped. Some of you might see it as one point gained. Who knows that? But this is really important to say. Done. Can't change that. Seven points clear at the top of the league. All the focus is on the derby. Simple as that. If you win the derby and there's no injuries, what happens out there for the 90 minutes is completely irrelevant. And I mean that. But I keep hearing people mention performance. Bullshit. You win the derby, no injuries. That is the perfect Saturday. In fact, if it is a little bit scuffy, maybe that's the sign, you know, as people will talk about, the sign of being a top team. And uh, yes, don't get me wrong. I would love to absolutely steamroller them 6 0. And I'd love to hear the tell you, I'm out raining round. Goodison Park, maybe a few chance of Rafa Benitez even. How sexy would that be? However, it's just about winning. It's just about getting 10 points clear and putting your feet up and watching the weekend. Because actually, if you look, some of the fixtures aren't easy for everyone. Fulham, Arsenal, not an easy place to go. Remember Fulham, on that's on Sunday, I should say, but Fulham won last night. I mean, the annoying thing is asked about an extra day of rest, haven't they? But still not an easy game. So there is a lot to be positive, a lot to be looking forward to. Tomorrow, though, we cannot get out for it like last season. We cannot get out battled in any way. I am genuinely excited for this. Literally, the clock on me now has just struck 12.30 exactly, which means in 24 hours' time, we will be kicking off. Whether you're in the UK, whether you're outside the UK, whether you're in Antarctica, whether you're in a freaking igloo in the North Pole, wherever you are in the world, enjoy the derby. Let's hope it is what we hope it is. But ladies and gents, on Friday the 6th of December, that was another Media Matters Fan Field Index.